Good morning, students. Am I audible? Am I audible, everyone? Okay, thank you. Atul, uh, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. I hope my screen is also visible to you. Okay, so uh, let's proceed. So last class, uh, we were doing the uh, types of uh, your chlorination, right? So chlorination, you have studied what is chlorination, then what are the types of chlorination? We have learned about pre-chlorination, post-chlorination, then double chlorination, right? So uh, the, what is uh, we left uh, in between that day? So this next is your uh, breakpoint chlorination, okay? So uh, let us see what is breakpoint chlorination. So actually this uh, breakpoint chlorination, uh, it uh, gives you an uh, idea of how much chlorine is added to the water, okay? So you will know how much chlorine or how much dose of chlorine is added to the water by, uh, you know, like this term that is your breakpoint chlorination. So he, it also gives you like, how much dose of chlorination is uh, is there in the water and if you keep on adding the chlorination okay if you further going uh, in, i mean if you further keep on going uh, adding the chlorine in the water so whether that chlorine will appear as uh, free chlorine or free residual chlorine so it will give you the idea of that okay so uh, what happens here actually is that like whenever you add chlorine to the water so uh, just we have uh, discussed it, I think in the last class only we have discussed that when the chlorine is added to the water, it reacts with the what? Ammonia. Okay, it reacts with the ammonia that is present in the water. And when it reacts with the ammonia, it forms chloramines. Okay, also I have shown you the chemical reactions that they so it forms chloramines. So these chloramines, okay, so when these chloramines are formed, so these chloramines, they, uh, when you do a DPD test, DPD test is, you know, like to measure how, how much of residual chlorine is there in the water. So this DPD test, uh, it will uh, respond to it, uh, uh, to the uh, chloramines, okay, and uh, it will indicate how much of your total chlor residual chlorine is present in the water. Okay, so uh, uh, then what happens is that actually when you go on adding the chlorine uh, slowly to the water, okay, and when the residual chlorine is tested, so it uh, what it is found is that this residual chlorine, it will go on increasing, okay, it will go on increasing as, uh, as far as you add the chlorines to the water. Okay, so like uh, then what happens is that some of the chlorine, it is like... Uh, Obviously, you are adding chlorines for killing the bacteria in the water. So, obviously, some of the chlorines, it will be consumed by the bacteria that are present in the water. Okay. And so, the amount of the residual chlorine, it will slightly be now less than what, what you have added before. Okay. So, in this graph, you can see this graph. Uh, you can see here, so this point A, if you are starting to add the chlorine in the water, so it is going on increasing to point B, okay? And, you know, some of the uh, chlorines, it is being used by, for killing the uh, bacteria. So, uh, you see, the, if the addition of chlorine, it is uh, like uh, continued beyond this point, that is point B, okay? So the organic matters which are present in the water, it will start getting oxidized, okay? It will start getting oxidized because the bacteria bacteria are now uh, using this uh, chlorines because the chlorines are killing these bacteria. And so the uh, this uh, uh, organic matters are getting oxidized. And what happens? So if you further go on increasing the residual chlorines, it will fall down. 
okay it will not increase anymore so the uh, curve it will fall down okay since it uh, uh, it is uh, organic matters are getting oxidized okay and this bc it is shown by this one okay like the residual chlorine it suddenly falls down okay now this point c it is like it is the point okay beyond which if you further add any chlorine it will appear as your free, free chlorine okay beyond this point c if you add any chlorine to the water so it will appear as your free chlorine since now nothing is being utilized by the bacteria okay so this point c it is known as your break point chlorination okay so this is a graph you have to remember so in the x direction what is the amount of chlorine you are providing to the water and in the uh, y direction it gives you your residual chlorine in milligram per liter okay so next we come to next we come to uh, super chlorination so what is super chlorination it is a term which indicates the addition of excessive amount of chlorine to the water so what is the dose of excessive amount of chlorine that is added to water that is your 5 to 15 mg per liter so in some cases you know like it is necessary to add some excessive amount of chlorine to the water and uh, like in case of uh, very highly polluted waters you can say or you know like when there is a pandemic of uh, you can say or uh, water borne diseases is there so in that case also you might be using excessive amount of chlorine uh, you have to add to the water so that the bacteria gets killed so uh, and uh, like you know uh, it may be used when there is a, a bacteria in the water named uh, the cyst of histolytica that is uh, causes your amoebic dysentery okay when amoebic dysentery is there and the, the cyst of histolytica if you want to kill so you have to add some excessive amount of chlorine to the water okay and uh, uh, so the amount is 5 to 15 mg per liter okay so then we comes to dechlorination the final step or uh, step of chlorination that is dechlorination it means you have to when you remove the chlorine from the water so that is known as your dechlorination as simple as that so um, okay so and uh, what are the common dechlorinating agents okay um so the common dechlorinating agents are named as sulfur dioxide okay activated carbon sodium thiosulfate sodium metabisulfate then sodium sulfide sodium bisulfide and ammonia so all these are your uh, dechlorinating agents that means uh, while doing dechlorination if you add these kinds of uh, chemicals to the water then your uh, uh, chlorination or the chlorine will be removed from the water okay okay so this was all about your chlorination part now uh, we will uh, come to your softening part okay this is water softening give me a second okay so so what is basically water softening okay what is water softening so uh, the where uh, you have uh, learned about the hardness that is uh, found in the water yes so when you have to remove the hardness that is a uh, temporary hardness or you can say a uh, permanent hardness both the hardness if you want to uh, remove from the water okay so that is known as your reduction or uh, uh, sorry water softening process okay so uh, what it's written it is not always essential to soften a uh, raw public supplies to make the water safe for public uses since uh, the normally prevalent hardness in water okay so here uh, what happens uh, if for the industrial purposes uh, or industrial supplies of water you know every time it is not necessary to 
uh, soften the water, but for industrial supplies, the softening is very important because uh, this uh, hard waters, they uh, may cause some scaling troubles in boilers, okay, and also they may interfere in the working of the dyeing systems also, okay. So, how you have, uh, how to remove this um, temporary hardness and uh, this uh, permanent hardness, okay. So, let us see. So, what are the methods of removing temporary hardness? We already discussed is that uh, if you boil the water, then uh, uh, the hardness, the temporary hardness, it might get removed. Okay, so if you boil, okay, suppose if you boil, so what happens? Uh, the calcium carbonate that is present in the water, which leads to your hardness of the temporary hardness of the water, okay, this calcium carbonate, it is, you know, like soluble in water. Okay, it is only soluble in water. So, uh, it will exist in water as your uh, compound known as calcium bicarbonate. Okay, so, and it easily dissolves in water containing what? Carbon dioxide gas. So, when this water or when such kind of water it is boiled, so this carbon dioxide gas, it will evolve out. Okay, and leading to what? It gives a precipitation of calcium carbonate. So, this you can see the chemical reaction. This is calcium bicarbonate, CaHCO32. Plus, if you uh, boil, that means if you give heat, so it will give a precipitate of calcium carbonate, uh, which is an uh, insoluble, uh, insoluble form in water. And also, it gives you uh, the carbon dioxide gas that is going out and plus addition of water, okay? So this again, the magnesium bicarbonate and the magnesium carbonate, uh, so uh, that is present in the water, it cannot be removed uh, under this kind of chemical reactions, okay? Why? Because this uh, magnesium uh, carbonate, okay, that is MgCO3, okay, okay MgCO3, it is, you know, like it is uh, so only a part of it, it is soluble in water, okay? And this boiling, by boiling, it cannot, you cannot remove the uh, temporary hardness from the ma uh, magnesium. So, in that case, we can do another process that is uh, known as your addition of lime. So, if you add lime to the water also, so what happens is that uh, this hydrated lime, that is your CaOH2, it is added to the water. And these three reactions, as you can see, these reactions takes place, okay. So, what is happening here is that, so uh, your magnesium hydroxide, uh, first uh, when you magnesium carbonate, it is uh, added with lime, that is your hydrated lime, that is calcium hydroxide. So, when you add it with this uh, chemical compound, so what is forming? Magnesium hydroxide is forming, which is a precipitate. Plus also calcium carbonate is giving precipitate, okay? So again, when you add uh, the hydrated lime with the magnesium bicarbonate, so again, uh, what magnesium hydroxide is giving as a precipitate, okay? So in this kind, so uh, at last, in the final step, you can see calcium carbonate is uh, precipitated out. So this calcium carbonate and the magnesium hydroxide, it can be removed in the sedimentation tank by the addition of lime. Okay, so these two processes by boiling and the addition of lime, you can both uh, remove the only the temporary hardness, not the permanent hardness. Okay, so now coming to what are the methods for removing the permanent hardness. So if you can't remove the temporary hardness, uh, if, you, uh, if you can remove the temporary hardness, so there might be some ways to remove the permanent hardness also. Okay. Okay, so there are, you know, uh, like some methods to remove the permanent hardness, which are number one is your lime soda process. Number two is your geolite process, or also you can say as base exchange process. And number three is your demineralization. Okay, so from here, number one and number two is important. You have to study, you can study number one and number two. Okay. So, uh, lime soda process, uh, here what is happening from the name itself, 
you can say that there is lime and there is also soda ash okay so in this process your lime and the soda ash both are added to the hard water okay so which will react uh, this with the calcium and the magnesium salts and it will form uh, some insoluble precipitate of calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide okay so these are the chemical reactions you can see these are the chemical reactions uh, that they, that are taking place okay so your calcium carbonate uh, is precipitated out the magnesium hydroxide is precipitated out and again this magnesium uh, hydroxide is precipitated out so these are the chemical reactions uh, try to remember the chemical reactions okay again these are again that so it is a long like long step okay it's a long step so it's giving a precipitate of uh, like calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide okay so from this uh, reactions okay you can see that uh, in removing the entire like the carbonate hardness okay this reaction so you can see so for removing the carbonate hardness uh, uh, this uh, that is you know like uh, caused by this calcium as well as the magnesium that is present in the hard water so it reacts with the non carbonate hardness of magnesium to convert the same into the non carbonate hardness of calcium so both this calcium and magnesium hardness are converted okay so uh, this non carbonate hardness of this calcium is finally removed by soda okay so you have seen this calcium carbonate is finally the uh, precipitated precipitation is calcium carbonate so the non carbonate hardness of the uh, calcium it is being removed by the soda that you have added okay so this is the process of your uh, like uh, this lime soda process okay Okay, so now when you add lime soda to the water, you know there are some certain advantages uh, of it. Okay, and also some uh, disadvantages also of the lime soda process is there. So what is the uh, advantages? You see, this process is first of all the process is very economical. then you can say it is like it can easily be combined with the usual water treatment methods without much extra trouble or cost that means you can use this uh, while you know you have checked the hardness test so you can uh, do it in that similar way to remove the in the normal treatment water methods okay water treatment methods you can add and there is not much cost about this okay there there is not extra cost and then uh when this lime and soda are added to the you know like the coagulants during the process of softening come coagulation lesser quantity of coagulant be generally required so whenever you are using this lime and soda process in the uh, sedimentation coagulation process so you know the very less amount of coagulant if you you have to use in the process in or in the treatment process so this treatment it leads to the increase of uh, ph in the water also and uh, if you if the ph is like increased in the uh, uh, while in the treatment process so there is very less chance of corrosion in the distribution pipes okay then again uh, the increased causticity may also sometimes help in killing uh, pathogenic bacteria so since the ph is increased in this process so it might also help in killing the bacteria that are present in the water okay and uh, this will happen when the alkalinity uh, caused by this calcium and magnesium hydroxide up to 20 to 50 mg per liter is retained in the treated water for about 4 to 5 hours so that means uh, the alkalinity that is caused by this calcium and magnesium hydroxide okay if only if 20 to 50 mg per liter of uh, this uh, uh, calcium and magnesium hydroxide it is uh, re it remains in the water okay in the treated water for about 4 to 5 hours then you can say that it helps in uh, removing the uh, the or killing the pathogenic bacteria in the water so this treatment it also helps in reducing the 
mineral content of the water okay it helps in removing the mineral content of the water also the and also it helps in removing the iron and manganese from the water so this these are the this uh, seven are the advantages of uh, using the lime and soda process in the water so next is your what are the limitations of uh, lime soda so a large quantity of sludge that is what is the sludge that is the insoluble precipitates of calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide okay so uh, the precipitate uh, is known as your like the sludge so a large quantity of sludge is formed in this process which must be like disposed of by some suitable method this sludge may be discharged into the sewers or may sometimes be used for raising low lying areas after drying so what it is said here is that the sludge that is produced you know like in this process uh, the insoluble precipitates of this calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide this sludge it has to be you know discharged into the sewers okay or it you have to uh, you have to throw it in some uh, low low lying areas after the sludge is dry okay next is your like you have uh, you know like very careful uh, operation and only under the uh, supervision of some skilled labors is uh, required in order to get the good results uh, for this lime soda process okay and uh, you know one disadvantage is also there is that you know, like the uh, the pipe walls of the distribution system it may corrode okay or encrustation may takes place uh like if the water it is not properly recarbonated okay so that is one like uh, this advantage also and this uh, process this lime soda process is cannot help in producing waters of zero hardness that means if you also though you are using the lime soda process uh, for removing the hard water or the permanent hardness for removing the permanent hardness you cannot expect a uh, zero hardness from the water after using this process okay so that is one disadvantage you can say so uh, this is your lime soda process so next we come to the zeolite uh, exchange process or the base exchange process or it is also named as your cation exchange process for removing hardness okay so here basically uh what is uh, done you know like zeolites are used what so what are zeolites so zeolites are you know like it is uh, you can say uh, some salts or also you can say some clays which are hydrated silicates of sodium and aluminum okay so these are the natural salts or clays which are hydrated silicates of sodium and aluminum okay and they have the general formula of this one you see this uh, this is the general formula for uh, this uh, zeolite na2o l al2o3 x sio2y h2o okay so this is the you know like a uh, general formula for zeolites and here what is x and y these are some of the values okay so the value of x is two it can be two or more and the and that of y okay a, a y is also the same but there is two or more so this naturally uh, some of the zeolites that are occurring naturally okay these are substances okay they they are manufactured synthetically okay they are uh, also like these zeolites can also be uh, manufactured synthetically and they are known as resins resins are what naturally occurring zeolites uh, like substances that can be manufactured synthetically okay these zeolites or the resins they have the excellent property of exchanging their cations and hence during softening operation the sodium ions of the zeolite get replaced by the calcium and magnesium ions present in hard water that means this zeolite uh raise order raisins also you can say 
they have uh, when the chemical reaction takes place so the uh, like the sodium ions of the ge this zeolites they get replaced with the uh, this uh, calcium and the magnesium ions that are present in the hard water okay so this reaction you can say this reaction is uh, like the uh, is your uh, this zeolite uh, chemical equation that is taking place this na2 z this Z, it is what? It stands for the complex zeolite radical. Okay. So, so uh, as a whole, it is known as your sodium zeolite or active uh, zeolite. Okay. So, when it reacts with the calcium or the magnesium salts, it can be either calcium bicarbonate or calcium sulfate or calcium chloride or magnesium uh, bicarbonate, magnesium sulfate, okay, or magnesium chloride. So, when it reacts with the sodium zeolite or active zeolite, so it will give you the sum of the sodium salts of which don't cause the hardness. Okay, and also in addition to that, it will give your calcium or magnesium zeolites, which you know, like the exchange process takes place. Okay, so this whole it is the reaction that is taking place. Then, in this uh, chemical reaction, that that the calcium and the, the magnesium zeolites that is this. So when this is uh, uh, formed, it can be regenerated into, into you know, like uh, active sodium zeolites. Okay, when you treat that solution or this uh, zeolites in by, you know, like 5 to 10% solution of sodium chloride. So when you add uh, or you add the sodium chloride solution to the, uh, this calcium or the magnesium uh, this zeolites so you will be getting some active sodium zeolite okay so that is a regenerated form so you are getting na2z plus ca mgcl2 okay so this is the final reaction which you are getting okay so now we are having some again disadvantages and advantages of using your zeolite softening process. So what are the, uh, you know, like advantages? So here, as, as, uh, the, we, when we say that when you use the lime soda process, you cannot expect the water to be of zero hardness. But when you use a zeolite exchange process, okay, zeolite ion exchange process. So here you can expect the water to be of zero hardness that means you can completely remove the hardness from the water okay and uh, you can use the water for some specific uses like you, you you can use for textile industries or boilers okay so incrustations will not happen in all okay so this plant is compact automatic and easy to operate so the zeolite actions plant is very compact and is automatic and no uh, need of any uh, skill supervisions and it is very easy to operate then uh, here no sludge is formed okay and also there is no problem of sludge disposal then the running maintenance and operation cost is also very less then also it removes uh, ferrous iron and manganese from water so there is no difficulty in treating the water of bearing quality so wh whatever you know these advantages we we had in the lime soda process so all those are you know solved by this zeolite exchange process okay and also there are some disadvantages for using this zeolite exchange process is that you know this process it is not suitable for treating a very highly turbid waters okay because you know like the suspended impurities that you uh, gets deposited you know around the zeolite particles and thus causing obstruction to the working of the zeolite so when it, what is happening here is that when the turbid waters are there so in turbid waters what happened we have the suspended impurities okay many suspended impurities are there so when uh, you uh, do the zeolite exchange process for very highly turbid water. So the suspended impurities, they get deposited around the zeolite particles. So in, uh, in that case, what is happening that it is giving some obstruction to the, uh, for the working of the zeolites. Okay, so that is one disadvantage. Next is your like uh, the process, it leaves sodium bicarbonate in water. 
which cause priming uh, priming and foaming in industrial or boiler feed waters so it uh, when you when you are doing the chemical reactions you have seen that it leaves your sodium bicarbonate in water and that will cause you know like foaming in some industrial and boiler feed waters okay and also number 3 is the geolite process is costlier and unsuitable for treating waters containing iron and manganese so if the water it is uh, like there is iron and manganese so it is a uh, geolite process it is not suitable for treating that kind of water and it is very costly okay so uh, these are you know like the these advantages for your geolite exchange process okay so 5 minutes is left so today up to uh, here only i will be doing because from 11 i have some you know like meeting i have so i can't do this 11 am class i cannot cannot do so let us keep up to here today so only i need one class for you know uh, for uh, completing the water treatment part okay that is i think your module 3 to complete the module 3 i need only one class so after that we can uh, start our sewage part that is module 4 uh, we can start okay so uh, next tuesday i will be completing your this uh, water treatment part okay so you give your uh, attendances in the group okay whatsapp group you give okay then you may leave the meeting i will share this note in the group thank you